Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video I'm going to talk all about cellular senescence in more detail than I have done in previous videos and why our lab is researching it. So cellular senescence is often described by two key characteristics, one of which is a cell cycle arrest when the cell stops proliferating and the second is the secretion of factors which are referred to as the senescence associated secretory phenotype, otherwise known as the SASP. But these are just two characteristics of senescent cells. And more recently, there have been four key hallmarks that have been used to describe cellular senescence. In addition to cell cycle arrest and the secretory phenotype, senescent cells are also characterised by macromolecular damage and a deregulated metabolic profile. But it's important to remember that these four different hallmarks are not independent, they are also interdependent and depend on each other. And so it's somewhat better to think of cellular senescence as a collective phenotype. And so this collective phenotype can help with the identification of senescent cells. And this is of interest because it can help with the understanding of senescence and its involvement with age and age associated diseases such as cancer. So you might now be wondering what actually causes a cell to become senescent and why do we see these four different characteristics and not other characteristics? Well, it turns out there are lots of different ways that you can induce a cell to become senescent. This includes telomere attrition, genotoxic drugs that are used to treat cancer, irradiation, oncogenic stress after replicating so many times and also oxidative stress. So replicative senescence is the form of senescence that is most often talked about and that is caused by telomere attrition which is when the telomeres, these repetitive sequences at the ends of chromosomes, they shorten over time as a cell divides. And so these sequences are just repeats of TTA, GGG DNA nucleotides, and they're bound by this complex of proteins referred to as the shell train complex. And so this protects the ends of the DNA from being recognised as double-stranded breaks, which could stimulate the DNA damage response. But the problem is, as these telomeres shorten, that protection gets lost and DNA damage can be activated within a cell that can cause cellular senescence. So why doesn't a cell prevent this telomere attrition from occurring? Well, besides in a few cells where they do have the capability to enhance the length of telomeres, it is thought that by limiting the number of times that a cell can divide, this can help to prevent the development of tumours. And this is because tumours can develop from uncontrolled proliferation. So by limiting the number of times a cell can divide, it instead causes a cell to enter replicative senescence, and two pathways involved in this involve the protein P53 and retinoblastoma. And what these pathways do is they can activate proteins known as cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors that help to prevent the cell cycle and they cause cell cycle arrest. And so one of these proteins is P16. However, mutations in the genes encoding these proteins could enable a cell to escape senescence and continue to replicate, which could lead to tumour development. So because of its function in preventing the cell cycle, P16 is commonly used as a marker of senescent cells. And interestingly, in studies whereby they've cleared cells expressing P16, so removing these senescent cells, they've delayed age-associated disorders in mice. So the cell cycle arrest is a way of preventing damaged cells from replicating further and potentially causing tumour development. But what is the role of the senescence-associated secretory phenotype? So senescent cells, irrespective of the inducer of senescence, have been shown to secrete a variety of different factors that include pro-inflammatory factors, signalling molecules known as cytokines, growth modulators that can induce the formation of blood vessels, and also factors that can modulate the surrounding extracellular matrix of the cell. But the question is why? So a function for each of the individual factors is far from complete, but currently the understanding is that the SASP can mediate the variety of pathological and physiological effects that are associated with senescent cells. So some of these effects include the ability of the SASP to reinforce and cause the spread of senescence to other neighbouring cells. It is also thought that the SASP can activate the immune response to help eliminate these senescent cells and to remove them, but senescence and SASP have also been shown to play a key role in wound healing and development. However, if senescent cells are not removed, 
Because they express this inflammatory SASP, it can result in chronic inflammation, which can have deleterious pro-aging effects, and so it is also sometimes referred to as inflammation. For these reasons, there is a lot of interest in understanding the SASP, and in particular, it is known that the strength of the SASP and also the composition of these different factors can vary depending on the context, so the cell type in which senescence occurs, and also the context including how senescence is induced in the first place. So another hallmark of senescent cells is macromolecular damage. And in particular, this can include damage not only to DNA, but also to proteins and lipids and other molecules found within a cell. Particularly prone to damage are the telomeres that we've already spoken about. But this time, instead of the reduction in length of telomeres, this is damage independent of telomere length. And these characteristics are known as telomere associated foci where you have the co-localization of telomeres with gamma h2ax which is a sign of dna damage and dysfunction one of the ways that this damage can occur is through the accumulation of reactive oxygen species within a cell that not only cause damage to telomeres but can also cause proteomic damage in addition enhanced proliferation from oncogenic induced senescence can cause damage to DNA due to collapse of replication forks during DNA replication. Processes that can therefore remove these damaged proteins is therefore advantageous to a senescent cell, and so upregulated in senescent cells is a process known as autophagy, which helps to eliminate damaged and unfolded proteins. So senescent cells are often referred to as zombie cells, however senescent cells are actually highly energetic, and are constantly producing these factors that we've already spoken about in the SASP. And so it requires energy that is generated in the form of ATP from mitochondria. However, in addition to the production of ATP, mitochondria also produce these reactive oxygen species that we've already spoken about. And so this can increase the amount of protein damage and therefore requires the cell to depend more on energetic processes such as autophagy that just fuels this increase further in reactive oxygen species. Interestingly, the removal of mitochondria, a process known as mitophagy, has been shown to be able to suppress the secretory phenotype. So in addition to these four key hallmarks of senescent cells, there are also changes that are seen at the chromatin level And so this is the DNA and its associated proteins and refers to the way in which DNA is organised within the cell and how open or compacted it is. And this can have implications for the stability of the genome and also for individual gene expression. Interestingly, in some senescent cells, in particular oncogenic induced senescence, are the observation of these heterochromatic foci referred to as senescence associated heterochromatic foci otherwise known as SAF, and these can be visualised as DAPI dense regions in the nucleus, and so DAPI is what's used to stain DNA. One way in which to study these changes in genome organisation include Hi-C, and this process requires both experimental and computational methods to execute. So recently in the lab, we have described senescence as a physiological life cycle, whereby normal cells can get exposed to stress, and that stress can lead to the induction of senescence and the development of the SASP, which can therefore enable the recruitment of immune cells to clear these senescent cells away and to resolve any stress that has occurred and to go back to normal. So this helps to prevent growth of damaged cells that may be at risk of malignant transformation. However, we also think that senescence has a dual role in cancer and also has negative consequences that can come from, in particular, the secretory phenotype that have pathological consequences, including cancer formation, chronic inflammation, and age-associated disorders. So studying senescence is of great importance, and there are many different questions that we are trying to address within the lab. These include how gene expression is regulated during senescence compared with other stress responses. This can help with the identification of senescent cells and the development of senolytics, which are drugs that can remove and eliminate senescent cells. We are also interested in how cell communication modulates senescence-associated phenotypes, and in particular this focuses on the secretory phenotype, whereby these signalling molecules result in the communication between senescent cells and normal cells and immune cells, and how this implicates senescent cell clearance. 
And so we're also interested in how senescence modulates tumour initiation and the role that senescent cells play in the initiation and early stages of tumour development. And another key question is how ageing itself contributes to tumour genesis and the potential triggers of senescence. But these are just some of many questions that we're addressing within the lab. So hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of what cellular senescence is and why we're studying it. If you're interested in finding out more about our lab, check out our website or follow us on Twitter where you'll see updates on what the lab is doing and publications within our lab, but also similar labs. So as always, hope you've learned something and thanks for listening.